Google Classroom is an exciting new tool that allows teachers to utilize all the functions of Google Apps to create engaging lessons and assignments. Google Classroom is only available to organizations using Google Apps for Education. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the advanced functions of Google Classroom, like making announcements and assignments, attaching files to your assignments, how to grade and turn in assignments, as well as how to organize your files for the best possible uses of Google Classroom. So the first thing I want to show you is how to create announcements to the class. It's really easy. You'll just go into Google Classroom, select your class, and in the stream you'll see a little text box here where you can make announcements. So if you wanted to tell the class uh, Welcome to Google Classroom. Please be sure to check the announcement wall for any news and assignments. So when you get that there, you can also attach files from your computer or from Drive. You can attach YouTube links or links to other websites in your announcements. So then you can go ahead and click Post. And then everyone in the class will see this announcement. They can add comments or reply to it if they have questions. The next thing I want to show you is how to add an assignment to your Google Classroom. So it's very similar to the announcement. Instead of clicking announcement, you just click assignment right here. And here you can give it a title first. What you should know is whatever you title this assignment, that's what it's going to show up as, as the name of the file uh, with each student. So when you think of these names for your assignments, I think it's good to kind of have uh, a set method for it, or at the very least keep the name short so that when you're looking across them you can see the whole name. So we'll just call this one test assignment number one. And we'll say in this uh, description we'll just say that it's tell me about yourself. So the next thing you see looking down is you see you can give it a due date. So just depending on when you want the assignment due, you can set that out. We'll just give this one a date of June 30th. And you can even add times if you want to be specific about it. Say if you want it uh, submitted by the end of school on that day, well then you could say, uh, well this needs to be done by 3 p.m. And then uh, it will show the kids some reminders. You know, it'll send them little email reminders. Hey, your assignment is due by June 30th at 3 p.m. Once you have all these settings, uh, then you can start working on the assignment. You can either attach it uh, the same way as you can with the announcements. You can do it from your computer or from Drive. I'm going to send this uh, assignment as an attachment from my Google Drive. So I'll just click on it here. And I've saved a file in my Google Drive. Uh, it should be down here. It's just called Tell Me About Yourself. So I'll just click that and select Add. And once you've done that, you'll want to figure out how exactly you want to share the file. So there's a few different options. If you click here, you can see uh, students can view the file. So if you just wanted them to be able to see this, uh, and then respond to it. You'd select view the file. You can also select students can edit the file. Um, that means that every student you assign it to can log in and change this one specific file. Uh, for most purposes I wouldn't recommend this because when you have 30 different students all editing the same document it can get a little bit hairy. Uh, but there are some instances when you might want to do students editing the file. Uh, what I recommend for most of the assignments is make a copy for each student. What this does is it just uh, exactly what it says. It makes a copy of this assignment and it files it out to each student just like you would pass out a real homework assignment. So we'll select this for this assignment and you'll see um, from the student side what that looks like in just a second. So we have our assignment the way we want it. It's ready to pass out to the students. Now we can just go ahead and click assign and that will instantly give every student that is logged into your class a copy. And so now you'll see here up on the assignment board this is posted as test assignment one. Now the students will see just this assignment. The teacher sees um, 
the amount of students that are done and not done. So when a student submits their assignment, you'll see this will reflect uh, here in your window as done. I only have one student in this class, so of the whole class, none of them have done it. So that's what you see here. If you accidentally send out an assignment uh, and you've made a mistake to it, you can change that in the end by clicking these uh, three dots and it'll give you the option to either edit your assignment or delete it completely and start fresh. When you log back in from the student side, you'll notice in the email section, uh, your students will see some notifications from you. One that I made this announcement, as well as the second one that I've sent out an assignment. So there's a couple ways that your students can get to the assignment. They can either go straight to classroom from their app launcher button by going down to more and selecting classroom, or they can just follow the link that you sent them with their assignment. So they can click here, test assignment, and to get started they just follow this link right here. Once this loads up your students will see the assignment here and they can begin working on it by just clicking open and you'll see here uh, that they have a copy of their assignment and then they have some different uh, options here. They can add files and links uh, from their own Google Drive or from the internet in with their assignment. Uh, they can also uh, create their own types of files within Google Drive and as well as the last one they have the option to turn in. Now it's worth noting that you should tell your students that once they turn things in they won't be able to edit them anymore um, so it just kind of depends on what you want. If you want them to be able to continue editing you'll need to warn them to not turn it in uh, because then you'll have to go in and resubmit it to them so that they can edit it and then it just takes a lot of extra time. So make sure they know not to turn it in until they are fully done. So if they want to go ahead and start working on this assignment they can go ahead and click this link and once it loads up you'll notice that uh, the name of their assignment is up here. It's called uh, Tell Me About Yourself which is just the name that we gave it but then it also adds the student's name. And uh, they can change it if you'd like, but I think it's good to have the kids uh, just keep them named as you named it so that you can find it easier. So then the student will just go ahead and they can edit this document right here in it. They don't have to create their own template. They can just answer the question. So I'll go ahead and answer these really quickly. So now the student has some answers in here. They've uh, typed an answer for every question and they can see here that all changes are saved in Drive. So what they'll want to do now when they're finished is they can just go ahead and click Turn In. And if they want to add a note to the teacher, they can add a note there. If not, they just click Turn In. And this will submit it to the teacher. So I've logged back in on the teacher side of things and you see now here this change from Not Done to One Done and Zero Not Done. So we can go ahead and look at the file that's been completed by our student in here. And we can see there's a little grading section. So you can go ahead and look at the student's uh, document straight through here without looking back into your drive. With this, um, since it's being viewed inside of Google Docs, all of the other features that we learned with Google Docs apply, so if you'd like, you can make comments about stuff. Uh, so if you want to comment on this, you can highlight it, right-click, select comment. You can add a comment over to the side. You can also enter editing mode, uh, just like I showed you in the Google Docs tutorial, by clicking this arrow up here going to suggesting and then you just go down to whichever part of the document that you'd like to make a suggestion on maybe uh, here we could highlight this and say so we could go ahead and make that suggestion and uh, at the end when you're done looking at the assignment you can go back to her assignment and give her a grade. Let's say we'll give her a hundred out of a hundred. That will save. And then we can go ahead uh, if we're done grading it and you've collected your your grades into your gradebook you can go ahead and click return 
and that will give the assignment back to the student. We can say, great job, Ginny, and select return. And then this will just uh, mail her uh, email stating that we have graded her assignment and there are some comments and suggestions in there for her to look at depending on the teacher's preferences if you want your students to try again maybe they can edit stuff revise it resubmit it um, that's just totally up to you depending on how you want to do your grading so the last thing I want to show you is how to organize your files uh, for the best usage of Google Classroom you'll notice that once you create a class in Google Classroom you'll see in your drive that it creates a folder for you for Google Classroom so if you open this up you'll see that um, it has a copy of each of your classes and in here I've created some other folders and some documents that I pass out to the students I think it's a really good idea to um, be mindful of how you organize these I think one suggestion is to make a folder for each specific assignment every resource that you might use for that assignment you could just keep inside that folder uh, so it's easier to find year after year so in here you'll see in the text test class section a you'll see uh, the templates and the folder for the assignment and in that folder you'll see a copy of every student's assignment so this is just another way to find all of your uh, folders one suggestion I might also add is each of your students when they start using Google Classroom they will get a Google Classroom folder inside their drive as well and so it works very easily if you want to just go ahead and have the students drag and drop that classroom folder directly into their student portfolio folder that hopefully they've created earlier then you can just log in and access that easily since it's already shared with you as well as um, any parent or guardian that wanted to log in and see it uh, that folder could be shared with them as well then they can just easily pop in and, and check in on what their kids or their students are doing so I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments section, and I will try to, my best to respond to all of them. Thanks, and have a good day.